danger. Prowling the seas of man's folly like a hungry shark. What are you gonna do when he has a little nibble? Cry like a baby? Or are you gonna fight back? That's where I come in. Think of me as your ranger of danger. I'm Nick Frost, and this is Danger 50,000 Volts. <laughs> Coming up on tonight's show... We'll show you how to find your way in the dark. Deliver a baby in a taxi. And find delicious food in the icy wilderness. But first... I've lived and worked with monkeys like these for most of my adult life. And I know if things went wrong, I could pretty much duff them up no problem. But what if I exchanged him... ..for him? It may surprise you to know this, but gorillas are the hippies of the jungle. They laze around all day eating grass and weeds and picking parasites off of one another. <coughs> but it's here that the comparison must end. When a hippie goes ape, he'll hit you with a psychedelic wall of sound. But when a gorilla freaks out, the chances are he'll throw you 20 feet. What do you do if you're camping in the Congo and you stumble upon a gorilla's pad? You need a plan, and it better be monkey-proof. Sean, um, let me tell you about my biggest nightmare I have. I'm trapped in a research laboratory. It's late at night, and a, a male silverback has escaped and is rampaging around the, the laboratory. I start to run, and he clubs me to death with his mighty fists. What am I doing wrong? What you should have done, OK, uh -huh. would have been to crouch right down, OK? Yeah, like that. All right. Do, you know, try to make yourself look physically unimpressive, OK? Oh, that's good. And then look, don't look him in the Sorry. eye. Look down, OK? Right. And I think with you crouched down there, not looking at him, right. he'd get that message loud and clear okay. and he'd leave you alone. Now, what kind of signs would King give me if he was, you know, getting ready to attack and he wanted maybe me to back away? The first thing, I think, you'd, you'd smell him. He, this kind of very pungent uh -huh. smell would come out of him really quickly. Right. And that's the first thing. Would he kind of employ facial features and, and movements to, to tell me, you know, it's... He might chest beat. <laughs> um, he might scream, even. <laughs> but right. I wouldn't, you know, expect that to happen. I mean, that's very unlikely. Right. But, I mean, if you crouch down, that should be the end of it. But if it were not, those are the kind of warning signs that you should be alerted to. So if I have crouched down and he's yeah. continuing to threaten me and he's, he's charging me, surely I should run then? I would think it's probably all over if you run. Right. Or he would, you know, be inclined to run after you and he might even cuff you or something like that. Presumably the cuff from a gorilla is a lot more powerful than something I get from mum. I would imagine, again, I don't know your mum, but uh, unless she's 450 pounds, um, I, I doubt it. So, how strong is a gorilla? How many kind of men would a gorilla equal? Could it pull my arms off? Oh, sure. I mean, we don't want to test this, obviously. No, no. no but he is immensely strong. I mean, I, I would say between about t the strength of 10 men. But, you know, we might be able to give you some idea without um, risking Pulling. your life in any way. Why don't you try and do a tug of war with King? All right. Uh, I doubt that you'll win, but. Well, um, oh, maybe. You let's have will. a go. Okay. As King is ten times stronger than me, I decided it would be wise to try and psych him out, to give myself a bit of an advantage. Ready? I think I riled him a bit there. Time to do battle. Oh, you want that? Come on. Oh, it's a bit rude. You don't like my musk, huh? No. What is his problem? King. He's like a hairier Jeff Capes, isn't he? He just doesn't want to play. Come on, this is monkey madness, mate. Give it a tug. Try it, you might like it. 
There we go. Um, didn't want to play. Technically, that's a victory for me. Uh, and I feel quite proud of that. I've beaten the ape. Come on, best out of three, banana head. Yeah, you sore loser. Time for a recap. Don't run, it will make him angry. Don't do anything that suggests physical confidence. If he does attack, there's no point fighting. Sit back, relax and enjoy the once-in-a-lifetime feeling of having both arms pulled off. Bang. There it is. The definitive guide to guerrilla safety procedures. But just let me leave you with a thought before I go. Is the angry ape the real danger here? Or is the biggest killer of them all man? Goodbye. Caves. Nature's holes. Comfy, warm and safe until the tide comes in. When this happens, try to ride a wave straight out of the cave. If that doesn't work, you need to get above water. Stand on a rock, or a pile of rocks, or anything to keep your head above the water. Don't bother shouting, you won't be heard over the waves. The best way to attract attention is to use a whistle. If no one comes, you'll have to wait until the tide goes out. So make yourself as comfortable as possible and eat any food you have with you. Eventually the tide will go out and you can leave the cave, by which time it'll probably be night and you'll need to know how to move in the dark. What better place to take a stroll than here? It's the woods. It's a place of beauty, of relaxing birdsong, nature's very own stress reliever. But is it? Just a few thousand miles to the east, and travelling at roughly the speed of sound is a force that will turn this rural haven into a world of pain. The dark. This is the dark. It's a very dangerous place and no laughing matter. Six out of ten accidents with pedestrians happen in there as to two-thirds of all violent attacks. If you throw into that mix some zombies, a werewolf and a couple of Frankensteins... <laughs> We're in serious trouble.